Welcome to our living room. <laughs> Today we have a kin stretch class for you where you don't even have to leave the couch. Um, this is our imaginary couch. We have an imaginary couch cushion and uh, at home you can use your own couch. If you have a throw pillow handy, it could be helpful. If you have a yoga block handy, it can serve a similar poipus, by which I mean purpose. So friends, we're gonna start our warm up with a little spinal movement such that as we get into the hip work later, we can start to differentiate spine moving from hip moving, which will be a big focus of today's class. So you can come onto the floor just in front of your couch, or if you have space in your living room, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. We'll begin with your segmental cat camel. So you're gonna create a little bit of tension through your body and then start to tuck your tail under and slowly round up through your low back, middle back, upper back, taking your time to travel through those segments in between the shoulder blades that are oft forgotten. And then finally nodding your chin to your chest. And then from there, reverse. Excellent team. You're working for time here. No need to count your reps. I want you to find your smooth controlled pace where you can really take a mental inventory of each segment of your spine. Make sure you're breathing as you go through this articulation. As you round, see if you can check into what is contracting or shortening on the front side of your body to bring you into that rounded position. As you work your way into an arch, see if you can feel into what's shortening or contracting on the back side of your body to actively bring each segment of your spine into that arch. Beautiful. And then let that go and now try to find what lies in the middle of those two extremes, your neutral-ish spine, um, neither rounded nor arched. And then take a deep breath here and I want you to create some tension through your midsection as though you were ready for somebody to try to push you or budge you and you could not be moved. Keep that tension through your belly and now you can watch the first one here for Will. You're going to sit your butt back towards your heels any amount without allowing any loss of tension through the midsection or any change in shape of your spine and then rock back forward. Work with that a few times on your own keeping that nice brace through your midsection sitting back, feeling how much you can crease at the hip without any change of your spine shape or length. Another way to think of that is that your belt buckle and your t-shirt logo aren't gonna get any closer together as you sit back, nor are they gonna move any further apart. Just finding a little active hip crease, differentiating that from rounding and arching of the spine. Beautiful. All right, let that go. And now for our hip cars today, if you have room in front of your couch, you're gonna walk your quadruped position over such that your hip is able to touch the couch and then your outside leg will be free to move the, through the car. If you can get a little contact on your shoulder or your upper arm on the couch side as well, that's great. If you don't have this option in front of your couch, just take a quadruped position somewhere in your living room. And if quadruped's not your jam, as always, you can pick a different position for your hip cars. We're gonna tick tock back and forth and work for time. So take a deep breath in, create a good abdominal brace. If you're up against the couch, I want you to actively push yourself into the couch and then start to drive that outside knee forward towards your chest. Here's that same hip crease that we were just feeling, but in a different context. And then push your leg out to the side. As you push your leg out to the side, drive your hip or into the couch. Start to push the sole of your foot towards the ceiling and bring that leg all the way up as high as you can and then around so that your thighs scrape past each other. When you get contact there, pause and reverse direction. Kick up to the sky. Good. Push out to the side and come around. Excellent team. You are on the clock. Keep working back and forth through this hip car. 
And just notice as you bring your leg out to the side and away from the couch, that your hip that's touching the couch will want to leave the couch. That is the moment when I want you to push extra force into the couch. You can really use your farthest away hand to help drive you against that couch surface. If this is your first time doing this variation, it might feel like a lot more muscles are turning on in your midsection to stabilize you. See if you can bookmark that feeling. We want that to always be part of your hip car. Last 15 seconds. Three, two, one. Excellent. Facing the other way, posting up into the couch, hip and shoulder engaged and strong. Brace tension through the midsection, and then begin pulling your knee towards your chest. Pushing your leg out to the side, driving your heel up towards the ceiling, looking for no change in the spine shape, coming around until the knees or the thighs touch, and then rewind, kick back up to the ceiling. Push that leg out away from the couch as you drive your hip into the couch. Come around, pull knee towards chest. And again, when the thighs touch, rewind. Nice job, team. Focus in now on finding your one mile per hour cadence. Smooth, controlled pace. Searching for the outer limits of what that hip can do without anything else contributing. And in this case, your indicator of anything else contributing could be, are you maintaining your hips pressure, your shoulders pressure into the couch? It's a nice, simple one. Keep breathing. Last 15 seconds. You've got this, reinvest. Keep the midsection strong for five, four, three, two, one. Let that go. Fantastic. All right, now you get to sit on your couch. <clears throat> so this is a nice alternative to the 90-90 position if you're familiar with that one. You're going to bring your leg, let's all start with our left leg, why not, onto the couch such that your ankle is hanging off, that thigh bone is coming straight ahead from your hip socket, and you're making roughly a 90 degree angle at your knee. Now, this is where you may want a pillow. If you feel like there's a big gap underneath the knee and the couch, you could place something under there to give you a little bit more support as we start to move and feel like your thigh is supported. That other leg gets to drape down here. Depending on the height of your couch, your knee might touch the floor lightly, and that's something you can play around with to try to find your most comfortable position. We really want this hip to be fairly at rest so that we can focus in on finding a stretch through the front leg hip. So now, we don't wanna to have too much round or arch of the back, but we're gonna to try to tilt the belt buckle forward such that you start to locate a stretch deep in the cheek of that front leg, which I said was our left leg. Keep me honest about that. Nice. And then here you can play around. Where do your hands need to be on the couch, on your leg, to feel like you are stable and supported, finding a stretch through that back hip. Yeah, Will's showing some great options here. Settle into what feels like the best stretch for you and start taking some slow and controlled breaths. Deep breath in, relaxed exhale. As you breathe in, just a slow, calm breath. As you breathe out, try to send that breath to the tissues that you feel stretching and see if you can encourage them to melt. Very nice. Breathing in, breathing out. Good. Staying in the stretch sensation, take a moment to scan your body for any other sensations that are distracting and see if you can make any tiny adjustments to alleviate or eliminate those sensations so that you can bring even more of your focus to that stretching tissue. Beautiful. Now, in a second, we're gonna start our first 
Pale's effort, our first isometric contraction to now try to own this range of motion that we're working on. And that will be to press down into the couch like you're trying to rotate your leg back to parallel. So if I'm propped up on the couch like this, success would be whoop and also whoop. Yeah, so it's gonna be pushing the couch away from you and also rotating through the couch. And you may feel that rotational pressure more clearly in this setup than you do in others. So we're excited about that. So take a deep breath in, get stable and brace your core just a little bit without losing your position. Start to put pressure just down into the couch. Find that first, like you're trying to push it away from you. If Will were successful, he would push his torso back up tall. Keep that and now start thinking rotation as well. So your knee isn't gonna lift at all, it's gonna keep pressing down. But you're gonna try to rotate away from that knee down through the couch. And this will probably already feel like you're close to a 20% effort. Start to gradually ramp that up. Find 40%, 60%, 70%. Make sure your body is squeezing and tensing at 60% so that hip is not working on its own. Ramp everybody together up to 80%. Trying to rotate back to parallel. And then give me your greatest, safest effort. Keyword safest must feel very challenging, but very safe for you. Could be 81%, could be all the way up to 100. You get to decide. We're here, we're maintaining for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax that effort. See if your body allows you to move into a deeper position of stretch. Make any micro adjustments to make that feel good. And now we're gonna to try to find the opposite rotational tissue, the stuff that would bring your ankle up off the couch and bring you into more external rotation. Give me a little bit of brace through the midsection and try to find what would do the opposite of what we were just doing. Could you get something to spin your thigh bone outward such that your ankle might scoop up? If you're new to this, you might not feel anything at all. That's okay. Asking for it is the first step in creating that neurological connection to the tissue. If you're more practiced with your pails and rails, you might know right where I'm going. We're gonna keep asking for that tissue to turn on for five, four, three, two, stay in position, one, slowly fade that effort away. Beautiful, nice job team. All right, we're gonna go back to that pails effort, but now we're gonna create some movement with it. So give me pressure down into the couch, knee, ankle, whatever's touching. Get a good sense of that underside tissue turning on and then brace your midsection and use that downward pressure to lever the torso back up tall. So Will's pushing down, pushing down, pushing down, trying to rotate away until he's upright. Good, pause in that upright position, brace your hands down in some way that makes you feel really sturdy. So again, if I came by, I shouldn't be able to shove you. And now try to find that opposite scoop. Can you lift your ankle? Can you externally rotate that thigh more? Maybe you'll feel that tissue more clearly if you weren't feeling it before. Use that to close down this angle. Pull your torso towards your thigh. Pull your belt buckle out towards your kneecap. Pulling yourself into a deeper stretch on the backside. We're gonna do that a few more times. Press down but go nowhere. Find that pales tissue and then use it to slowly, smoothly press yourself back upright. Pressing, 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 pressing. Good, go nowhere, scoop the ankle up towards you, find that rails tissue, and then use that to pull, closing that hip angle down. Pull, 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 pull. Good, pressing, go nowhere, find the muscles, and then press yourself out. Push, 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 good. Scoop the ankle, try to externally rotate that thigh more, and then pull, 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 pull into the best stretch you can feel on the backside. One more time to press. 
press down, go nowhere, engage that tissue that was just stretching, and then use it to slowly, smoothly, controlled, lever yourself back up. Teaching that hip that you know how to use it in this range of motion. When you get tall, slowly relax. Ah, 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 ah. All right, we're gonna leave that leg alone for just a second. We're gonna switch you over to the other side. And we'll run through that whole sequence on the other side. So as you set up on this side, notice that your hips range might be a little bit different. Again, with a cue that I want you to focus on is where do I feel the best stretch? Ideally deep in the cheek, but maybe you might also feel some spilling down into the hamstring tissue, longer stuff, etc. The only thing we want to avoid is if we get any pinch on the closing side, we don't want to lean too far into that. <clears throat> as you start to locate that stretch, start your deep breathing in through the nose, Ah, slow exhale out through the mouth. And again, you can play around with your trailing leg as to where it feels best for that leg to drape. Ideally, you're finding the least distracting position for that leg. Placing your hands wherever you need a little bit of support. And again, if you need to, propping up your knee with pillow, block, what have you. One more deep breath, get really clear on where you feel that stretching tissue. Good. And then commit to this position. As we do our pails and rails, these first efforts, we want an isometric contraction, meaning that nothing moves. You're just engaging the tissues that are long and short around the hip in this position. Starting with your pails, you're going to press down into the couch, like you're trying to push your leg away from your torso. And then you're also going to engage a rotational thought that your ankle might push heavier than your knee, so your knee stays nice and heavy. Again, success would be that you would unwind from that rotated position and push the couch away from you. But we're creating that nice go nowhere contraction. Good. Start to ramp that up. You're probably already at 20%. Start to find 40%, 60%. Make sure your midsection is braced to match that 60% effort. If you can squeeze your armpits, do that. If you're holding onto something, grip that. Find tension through as many muscles as you can so that hip is not working alone. Ramp everybody up to 80%. That's it, this should feel like strength training. And then give me your greatest, safest effort for today. Find it, maintain it. Breathing to fuel your work. You're braced, you can still breathe within that brace. Maintain for five, four, three, two, stay in position, one, slowly let that fade out. See if your body allows you a little deeper into that stretch position. It may or it may not, but just ask. Beautiful. And then we're going to try to find the opposite tissues, the stuff that would pull us into a deeper stretch. So start to think, what would lift my ankle up towards my opposite shoulder? Ha ha. <laughs> what would pull my thigh closer to my torso? What would pull my torso closer to my thigh? Nothing moves, just trying to get a nice isometric contraction there. Might feel like a better stretch on the back side. That's a really good indication that you're getting a great rails contraction. Maintain for five, four, faces of kin stretch. Three, two, stay in position. One, slowly relax. Oh boy, cramp bell, ding, 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 ding. Good. So cramping in the short stuff is very common. Even as experienced as you get, that won't necessarily go away. It's not a bad sign at all. It's a really good indication that you're utilizing and recruiting tissue at a higher intensity than it's used to contracting in a range that's not contracting. So you're forging that pathway forward to owning more possibilities for your hip. Okay, stay in position, find that stretch. Start to find your pails effort, pushing down, rotating the couch away from you. 
find a nice solid feeling of that somewhere between 20 and 60 percent what feels right and solid for you and then use that to lever your torso back up tall pressing down pressing down pressing down pressing down pressing down pressing down when you get tall pause make sure you've got a good brace in your midsection try to scoop that ankle up off the floor couch and then pull yourself forward we're on the floor so often that's what happens in my brain pull 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 you got it pull 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 good when you get into your deepest stretch pause press down but go nowhere feel that you've engaged that stretching tissue and then use it to push yourself back up push 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 until you're sitting up tall and then start to pull scoop your ankle up scoop and pull your belt buckle forward towards your front shin pull 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 finding that deepest stretch pause go nowhere press feel that you're engaging that stretching tissue and then start to create movement with it press 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 good last pull 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 find your deepest stretch pause press but go nowhere engage that tissue that was just stretching and then use it to slowly smoothly press yourself back up pressing 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 once you get all the way up tall slowly relax beautiful nice nice work okay you're going to switch on back to the other side i'm going to get out of will's way in a second here You're gonna set up your front leg the same so you can prop yourself as you need, but now we're gonna move that back leg a little bit. <clears throat> so what I'd like is for you to rest on the part of your foot that is where your laces would be, ish. Um, if you have a hardwood floor or a um, carpet, socks would be good here. We wanna be able to slide a little bit, um, or you can throw a dish towel underneath your foot if you find that you're really sticking and not sliding. From here, we want to hang on to this front leg in a way that gives you some leverage. So Will's going to pull up with his arm and push down with his leg. Another option that feels better for some people is to press down on the leg and press down on the couch. This is just up to your comfort, what creates a good bracing strategy. When we start to slide this back leg, I want nothing else to move. So we need a way that we can generate some tension for ourselves. So find what works best for you. Yeah, maybe you hold on to the back of the couch, why not? And then this rear leg, you're going to start to slide back and away from you as far as you can, keeping your belt buckle looking straight ahead at your front leg, and then slowly slide it back in. Yeah, so let's do that together. Brace yourself and slide that back leg out as far as you can feeling like you can't contract anything on the back side of the leg to pull that leg behind you anymore and then slide it forward with just as much control everyone's range of motion is going to be very different on this so i want you to just keep sliding in and out at your own pace the one piece i want you to make sure you're doing is that when you feel like you can't slide any further you hold for a second you really contract whatever is shortening on the back side of the hip and back side of the leg to pull that leg behind you and then you bring it forward. We're almost there, we've got 20 seconds left. If you're feeling the beginnings of a cramp on the back side of the hip, flirt with that cramp. Remember, it's an indication that you're getting into new territory of ownership of your range of motion. That's what we're all about here in Kin Stretch Land. Last three, two, Hold your last one, slide that leg out as far as you can and hold it. And then from here, we're just gonna do 30 seconds of neck cars in one direction and the other. Tuck your chin to your chest, trace your collarbone to one side, tip your ear back, trace a rainbow across the ceiling with your chin. Pass through, keep going in the same direction. Still holding that back leg as far behind you as you can finding the smoothest circle you can make with your neck. When you get to center this time, pause, reverse direction. We're still holding that leg. 
Still stretching it behind you. Still have tension through your midsection. You're just also exploring the largest, smoothest, pain-free circles you can make with your neck. You've got this. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly bring that leg forward. This is what happens when I spend too much time on my couch. I start going, <laughs> what kin stretch things can happen right on a good old couch? Okay, gang, switch on over to the other side. I'm gonna run that sequence on the opposite leg. Great. So set yourself up so your belt buckle is facing your lead leg. Grab on in some way that allows you to generate tension. Feel like your armpits are squeezing down onto your torso. Your leg can be pressing down into the floor. Your hand can be pulling up. And then we're gonna do those back leg slides. Give me a good brace and begin sliding that dangling leg as far behind you as you can, giving it a good squeeze where you feel your body stop you, and then allow it to slowly come forward. You're on the clock. Find your own pace here. As you slide that leg out, make sure your midsection is staying braced. This is another place where we don't want the shape of the spine to change. We're interested in training the hip joint all by itself. We don't need any contribution from the spine. Nice job. Sliding that leg behind. Feeling whatever you can feel on the back side of the hip that's pulling your leg away from your front leg. Yes, pulling your back leg away from your front leg would be the best way to say that. Three, two, one. Take your last slide. Hold that leg in the most rear position that you can and start your neck cars, tucking your chin to your chest. Whichever direction you pick to rotate is fantastic. Keep going smoothly in that same direction, maintaining a lot of tension through your body. Everything below the collar of the t-shirt is working hard to keep you in this position. And then your neck is exploring as many degrees of freedom as it has. Pause wherever you are and reverse direction for the neck circles. Beautiful. Check in with your back leg. Are you still reaching it behind you as far as you can? Last five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax. Lovely. Okay. Just wiggle for a second. Don't wholly change your whole situation. So now we're going to just do one last little piece for this ankle that's hanging off. It's a nice opportunity to get a little ankle work in here. So make sure that your foot is free and clear of the edge of the couch. If you need to cheat a little bit from where you are, that's totally fine. You're going to think of the sole of your foot as a flashlight. You're going to try to shine that flashlight up towards the ceiling and then down towards the floor. And this is the rotational motion or fundamental motion of the ankle that can help open up all other ankle possibilities. If you've never trained this before, it's going to feel a little weird and a little unfamiliar. Keep trying to find that back and forth. Sole of the foot towards the ceiling, sole of the foot towards the floor. You might feel some stretching sensations in your ankle that you're not used to. That's great. Keep working with this for another 10 seconds. Might be some crunchy bits, some crackles and pops. We're okay with that as long as there's no pain, no pinch. And relax. Fantastico. Set up on the other side. Same ankle story. So make sure that ankle is hanging off. Shine the sole of your foot up towards the ceiling and shine the sole of your foot down towards the floor. Good. Keep going with that. I really wanted to sneak this one in just so we could remember that we can sneak in extra work for any joint that needs it. So folks, if your ankle is your project that you're working on, 
Um, if you're a runner, hiker, someone who enjoys walking outside, being a general human, you can sneak in some ankle cars, even when you're sitting at your desk, even when you're sitting on your couch. One more in each direction. Yar. Excellent. All right. So in our couch metaphor, Will would have to be sitting facing you, but I'm going to artificially have him sit facing away from you for this next little sequence here. So you're going to sit right at the edge of your couch. Depending on how squishy your couch is, you might feel better doing this one on a more firm chair surface. So know that that is an option if you feel like you're just totally sinking in. You want to feel like you're sitting right on your sits bones, those kind of two pointy bones at the bottom of your pelvis. Most of your thigh bones are off the couch. From here, you're going to straighten one leg almost straight. So there'll be a little bend in the knee, but not a ton. And then you're going to tilt your belt buckle forward. And now we're looking for a bigger stretch down through the back of the hip and thigh tissue. So anywhere in the glute, hamstring, you might even feel some calf stuff all fair game but we're really trying to bow a stretch in the belly of the back of that thigh so hunt around a little bit and see if you can find that and then from here you may want to place your hands on your non-moving leg just as a sturdy place and we're going to start to engage the tissue that's stretching with our pales effort so you're going to sink your heel heavy into the floor that's action number one Action number two is like you're trying to drag your heel back towards the couch. So if you were successful, you'd push your foot through the floor and you'd bend the knee. No movements are happening because we're aiming for that isometric contraction, but those are the actions that you want to think such that we are successfully engaging that stretching tissue. Start to ramp that up gradually. Probably you're already between 20 and 40%. This one tends to come on real strong. See if you can eke that up to 60%. 80%. This is a big muscle group. This should feel like a lot of work. Hold that 80% and see if you can just send more help from the rest of your body. Can you brace your midsection? Can you press down into your opposite thigh or pull up on your opposite thigh just to create more tension? Can you bury your heel deeper in the floor? And you drag back with more force for five, four, three, two, one. Stay in position. Let that fade away. Reinvest in bracing your midsection. And now try to find the muscles that would make that ankle light or that would pull you into a deeper and more intense feeling of stretch on the underside of the thigh. You might feel that contraction in the front of the thigh front of the hip crease, midsection stuff. Maintain that for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax, staying in position. Yeah, see if your body allows you into a little bit of a deeper stretch. Usually it will. Excellent, we're gonna do that on the other side. So you can bend that leg, stretch your other leg out to almost straight and start to tilt your belt buckle forward. You can also think of lifting your tail feathers back and up. But again, we're not looking for a huge arch in the spine. We're more looking for the pelvis to change relative to the thigh bone. So thinking about belt buckle tilting forward, tail feathers lifting up, hunting around for that best sensation of stretch. Take a deep breath. Place your hands somewhere sturdy. Start to find your pales effort, which is to press down into the floor with the heel and also to drag your heel back towards your butt. The two actions of the hamstring, hip extension, knee flexion. Start gradually ramping that up to 20%, 40%, 60%. Make sure your body tension is matching that 60% effort. Midsection is braced, arms are strong. Other leg can be squeezed and pushing into the floor. Armpits pulling your shoulders down onto your ribs and then crank up to 80% and hold there. This is a lot of muscle groups. It should feel like a lot of work. 
dig deep. Could you be sending more help from anywhere else in your body? Do a little scan. Is there anybody that's just hanging out? Could you squeeze your fists or squeeze what your hands are holding? Maintain that 80% effort for five, four, three, two, stay in position, one, slowly relax, rebrace your midsection and now try to make your ankle light off the floor, your heel light off the floor. Try to pull your belt buckle closer to your thigh and pull yourself into an even deeper or bigger, more intense sensation of stretch on the underside of the thigh. Find whatever strong, safe effort you can in this action for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax. Staying in position, take one more calm breath before you come out. Nice. If that felt super juicy for you, you can pause this video and do another set on each side or rewind. We're gonna just give you a last closing action to do to help save and upload some of the changes that we've made in the hips. So we're gonna come into a plank. Um, for this one, let me have you watch one and then we'll do it together. You're gonna come into a plank with your forearms on your couch surface. If that feels like a crazy idea, you could just do a straight arm plank on your floor if your wrists are up for it. Um, so just watch one here. Will's gonna step back into a plank He's gonna to aim to have a good butt squeeze, nice feeling of connection between ribs and hips. He's gonna bend one knee such that that knee hangs just below the hip, and then he's gonna rotate into as much external rotation as he can and as much internal rotation as he can, back and forth like that. Go ahead and rest for a second, Will. Perfect. So again, that leg action is internal and external rotation, like your thigh bone is just twisting in your hip socket from your plank position. So let's do some all together. Find your plank. Get a little curl of your tail to feel connection between your ribs and your hips, your abdominal stuff working on the front side, and then keep that with you as you step back into your plank. Push the couch away to really plump up between the shoulder blades. Pull your right knee forward under your right hip and rotate. You're on the clock here. Find your own pace, squeezing out as much rotation as you can of that thigh bone in the hip socket. You got it, you're halfway, gang. And the more tension you can have in your plank, the more help you're gonna send to that rotating hip, the clearer the message is that we're uploading of what we've upgraded in this hip. Three, two, one. Relax for a second, good. Check in, see if your shoulders started to join forces with your ears. Theoretically, we want them to stay engaged to your rib cage so that your neck is free and clear. And then we'll do the other side. Find your plank, pull your left knee forward so it's hanging out under your left hip, and rotate. Beautiful, one side will be a little different than the other in terms of range. Just ring out what you have on this side. Good, nice tension through the torso so you're not shortening one side of the waist as you're rotating that thigh bone. Almost there, team. You got it. Three, two, and one. Relax. Really nice work. So next time you're sitting on your couch, treat yourself to a little bit of kin stretch while you're there. All right, we'll see you next time.